I like to call this like the eye candy. It's a very convincing visual for the temperature gradient across the entire domain. So getting right into it here, here we'll, we'll look at my first example. It's a thermal problem uh, with an electronic, where we're trying to keep an electronics enclosure nice and cool. Uh, we don't want any of those components inside the enclosure to get too hot. So the way that we set that up is we define a flow field inside the enclosure. So this is going to be what we call an internal a fluid problem, or we're not considering the air outside the enclosure. So that means we need to define boundaries uh, where that internal domain is going to be interacting with the external domain. And at the inlet, we're going to just define that with a fan curve uh, as our inlet condition, where it's pulling in that ambient air into the internal domain. Uh, with a with a fan. And then for uh, outlets, we have perforated plates that are open to the environment. We have uh, a hole pattern and a slot pattern uh, for outlets on the enclosure. And we'll also take a, a deep look at um, what library of materials that we get. And this is uh, these two components right here, the PCB generator and the two resistor components. Both of those come with the add-on called the electronics cooling module that sits on top of the base flow simulation package. So I'll point that out when we get there, but those two items, the PCB generator and the two resistor components, uh, that, that comes with an additional license for uh, that gives you some additional tools uh, that are it's especially pertinent to electronics cooling problems. So with that, I will get into showing some live stuff on inside of SOLIDWORKS. And then you see right away inside of the interface it's it's still your your typical solidworks you see you still got the whole model space and when i switch on the flow simulation add-in you see i get an additional tab here on my command manager i also get an initial initial uh additional excuse me tab uh, next to my design tree here that we can see right away i have multiple studies here that are linking to three different configurations of the model so right away seeing uh how quick and easy it is and how directly integrated and tightly uh, tightly coupled it is to the CAD geometry. It's, it's right there, right up top. So that's, that's a big deal. Um, and yeah, make, makes a lot of that translation uh, very easy in the geometry prep side of things. But uh, you see in the study tree here, it kind of pulls us into an interface where we define our features and our inputs uh, for, for telling the solver what our conditions are. So right away up top, we have solid materials. This is because we're considering conduction in this problem. So that means we're, we're interested in seeing thermal properties on the solid bodies. Of course, we have, you see, we have a heat sink. We've got some PCBs in here that we wanna see the thermal characteristics on, all sorts of stuff that uh, we, we need to consider thermal conditions on. So those solid materials sit on top of a different database than your, your typical SOLIDWORKS um, material database. So those properties are coming from a different place. However, if you already have the materials defined in the model, you can directly import them right into that different database. It's a very straightforward import uh, to, to get those solid material properties in there for thermal conduction. But uh, aside from those typical solid materials, see we've just got, yeah, some uh, al aluminum on the heat sinks. We've got a, a polymer for the enclosure itself. And then, yeah, the electronic components all have their own solid materials in there as well. As well. On top of that, those two additional kind of add-on things that come with that electronic cooling module here, we have this two resistor component and we see what's happening here. I'm, I'm going to get this enclosure out of the way so we can see inside better. Underneath the heat sink, we have this two resistor component here. You see, it's just modeled as a couple of very basic rectangles rather than having to, you know, do the very specific geometry the way that, you know, a lot of electronic components look with small details, small geometry. Being able to re represent that presence as a very simple block is a really, uh, really big way to improve performance on your solve time. It's a much smaller problem for the solver to consider. And inside that two resistor component, see we throw a heat generation rate at it, 15 watts here. 
And inside of the database, you, you kind of have a library here of all sorts of different uh, two resistor components in here. And in, inside of those, it really only takes two inputs. And what's happening here is it's we're plugging in a resistance between the junction in the case and the junction in the board. And those are typically the two critical locations where you want thermal properties at to know not only how much heat am I losing down into the board, but how much heat is transferring up into, well, in this case, the, the heat sink. Uh, it could be just up to ambient as well. So those are the two critical thermal locations and being able to simplify it down like this is a really big performance gain for the solver. It's a very easy way to represent those types of components. And then on the other side, uh, another one of those electronics cooling module items is the uh, PCB builder. So in here, this is also in that, that database, that one-stop shop of all of our materials and all sorts of things in this engineering database, it's called. But for the PCB builder, we have just some material properties. See, we've got dielectric and conductor material properties. We've got a PCB thickness, as well as our conductivity values. And really what the benefit here is not, not so much just the material properties, but we get to define each layer, individual layers thickness, as well as the percentage of cover on them. So how much copper content does each one of those layers have? And the benefit of this is that we, we get a much more realistic temperature profile through the thickness of the board. Um, if you didn't have the electronics cooling module, you could still of course throw just like a homogeneous material at that, but through that small thickness, we're not gonna get the most accurate conduction that way. So if, if you're really wanting to get ther good thermal results on your circuit boards, uh, you really should be doing that layered method uh, that I showed here. So that's solid materials in this study. After that, we go through and I'm gonna show that uh, the enclosure back in, there we go. And our boundary conditions, I have an environment condition on these circles right here, and then a, a couple of rectangles along the top and bottom. So if I had left this as is, those holes and those rectangular cutouts would have been just like completely open to the environment. And that's not, that's not reality. So we need to come in and define some perforated plates on those. And this is another solver performance thing. Rather than having to design each one of those tiny little holes on that perforated cutout, that hole pattern, and having to mesh through each one of those tiny holes, we can idealize that down to a perforated plate where again, in that engineering database, we just define uh, what shape are the holes, what's the diameter, and then this free area ratio determines how much of that, of this, this larger circle, how much of that is open to the environment. So really this perforated plate is behaving as like a restriction to flow. So rather than having it be completely open to the environment, now it's, it's got like a virtual hole pattern on it that uh, the flow field will have to fight its way through. And then after that, we just set our goals. Um, as far as goals go, I, I like to describe these as um, we're, we're, we're pointing the solver in the right direction. And we can think of these kind of as sensors as well. So that automated convergence I was mentioning a minute ago, that happens. Uh, these goals, they, they define what our convergence criteria is. So you see, I've got like some temperature goals, some flow rates on those fans. That main chip, I'm, I'm tracking the temperature on that as well as, yeah, all of the temperature on, on our electric components that we don't want to be getting too hot. It's a great way to track data as well. So after that, we, we, let the, we let the study run, let the computer do its thing. And now we start doing some post-processing and looking at plots. And there's this really nice tool where I can set a scene and pull up a whole bunch of plots all at once. So you see there, it kind of just remembers a collection of certain, uh, certain plots there rather than having to dig through and remember which ones are which. I can just in one go turn on all of these plots. And what we're looking at here is temperature gradients. So red is hot and blue is cold. So we can see where things are getting more hot. And these arrows are also indicating velocity vectors. So we can see the direction of the flow on these cut plots and surface plots. So right away, we can see that this corner of that circuit board is getting pretty hot up to 46 degrees. Let's us evaluate if that's gonna be a problem or if we need to maybe uh, rearrange things or so it's not getting too hot. 
we also see we get we're getting a lot of heat uh, coming off of that that heat sink as the flow is kind of going through and up and around it. We're getting kind of a pocket of hot, warmer air that's exiting out through those slotted cutouts up along the top, as well as we've kind of created a come around on it this way. We've kind of created a little bit of a tunnel here on the other side of that heat sink where there's a little bit of pocket that's getting hot. Uh, around these, uh, those are ram chips over here. These ram chips are getting a little bit hot up into that green region up above, you can see on our scale, that's about 30 degrees Celsius. That's getting a little bit warm in there, um, especially with those capacitors. And you can see on the other side of the capacitors here before it gets to the outlet, things are warming up a little bit in these green areas. And what we can do, instead of maybe those cut plots that I was just looking at, is really good at looking at maybe like local trends like that, where you can see, okay, it's it's getting warmer as we're going up this way. A, bit, a better way to kind of isolate out the information that you're interested in is with this ISO surface. And what this ISO surface does is it's showing us the exact location, like an exact profile of where the temperature is exactly 25 degrees C. And if that's kind of our target temperature, we don't want it to be getting too hot, uh, you know, around those electric components. 25 degrees C seems like a good place to, to isolate those. And we see uh, that surface, it's not 25 C. So we're, we're kind of this pocket right here, we can say is getting too hot. And that gives us a little bit more of, a, of an image of where, where are we keeping things cool enough? So yeah, you can kind of see things get too warm on the other side of that heat sink. We saw that trend, local trend already, but we're just seeing it another way here with this ISO surface. So kind of what this is telling for me is more like, where are things doing okay? So th that's an ISO surface. And then lastly on this one, I'm just gonna show a flow trajectory. I like to, just, I like to call this like the eye candy. It's a very uh, convincing visual for uh, the temperature gradient across the entire domain that we're considering. So uh, when I animate this as well, it also these arrows follow a trajectory relative to their, their actual velocity. So we can also see where things are moving faster uh, than other places. So we see maybe part of the reason why things are getting hot on the other side of that heat sink is because, you know, it, it, it blocks the flow from the fan is one thing. So maybe if we change the position or the orientation of that heat sink, maybe we can get a better velocity profile through those, uh, that, that kind of tunnel we created around the around those RAM chips.